Oh, all right. Hey, hey, there she is. Hello. All right, everybody, this is Kim Stonehouse. She is the women's volleyball head coach. Uh, just finished, and correct me if I'm wrong, your sixth season, is that right? That's correct, yes. All right, welcome. Welcome to the broadcast tonight. Uh, give everybody a little bit of an update, what you've been up to over the past couple of weeks. I know it's been probably one of the strangest times for, for a lot of us. Uh, what have you been up to? Oh, yeah, um, trying to stay busy. Yard work, walking the dogs um doing some housework some renovations just anything to keep sane i guess <laughs> exactly exactly uh as we said six seasons uh as the uh, rattlers head coach what do you enjoy the most about being a, a head coach at a high level of volleyball like this what's your favorite part of the whole thing uh i would say just be able to share my passion volleyball yep. coaching teaching is my passion and um it's hard not being a player anymore so this is the second best to that i think yeah so the camaraderie amongst the teammates and uh just kind of the the experiencing the highs and lows and hopefully more highs than lows that sort of thing right yeah exactly you hit the nail on the head yep good uh what is the What's the biggest pain in the butt when it comes to being a head coach, though? I mean, like, like you say, every job has uh, a degree of BS that you got to put up with or whatever. Like, what's, what, what, what part of it all is this kind of that thing where it's like, well, I got to tolerate it? Oh, you know? man. Um, I don't know. I, I really enjoy it. But I, I think one of the hardest parts of the job is having to make those tough decisions. Mm. You know, you, you as a human being, you want to keep everyone happy and – Unfortunately, we can only dress 14 players. That's the hard, that's a hard part. So having those conversations with those young student athletes that all you, you know, the only one they go out is play and, and you're taking that away from them. So, um, I mean, I guess I make the choice to carry 18 players, but that's definitely, I don't enjoy that. Yeah. You're a uh, graduate of McCoy. Um, and then as far as your playing career goes, you uh, played in McCoy and then tell me the story about what happened there because you got recruited to play in the NCAA, an opportunity that, you know, here in Western Canada doesn't exactly happen a whole lot. Like how, how did that all happen to you when you went to Montana state? Okay. I got Well, you're right. I did play at McCoy and, um, one of our rivals, W.R. Myers, there was a coach there, Del Cleland. And him and my coach at the time, Doug Grimm, who is now one of my assistant coaches, funny story. Mm -hmm. um, he told Doug about this identification camp in Assiniboia, Saskatchewan. And if you've ever been to Assiniboia, Saskatchewan, it's very small. <laughs> Not <laughs> much there. there. There's nothing there. <laughs> it's in the middle of nowhere, Saskatchewan. Anyway, um, Dell told Doug that he thinks I should go. So we hummed and hawed about it. And of course, my parents said, you're going. So that was in grade 11. Um, and I went, I didn't know anybody there, uh, made a friend. She was also um, there by herself. Anyway, I went through the camp and I didn't really know what to expect. And then the letters started to come. And the very first letter that I ever got was from University of Alabama, Jacksonville. Wow. And yeah, and I was like, oh, that's so cool. And then my dad brought out a map and he said, uh, here, here's a map. Look where Alabama is. And I had no idea, right? <laughs> and so that was far away. Um, second letter was to Tennessee. So equally far away, uh, middle Tennessee state, I think. Um, and the letters kept coming from different places across the United States. And then I started getting letters closer to home from some schools in Montana. And I said to myself i think that's i don't want to go too far away from home i think montana would be doable so um i went on a visit so you're allowed five official visits yep. um and i went on my first visit to montana state in bozeman and it instantly knew it was where i belonged everything about it was was great and so i verbally committed while I was there on my visit and I never visited anywhere else. So <laughs> yeah, I kind of jumped forward to grade 12 there, but um, I did go to the camp two years in a row. 
Yeah. What what is that like? I mean, if I'm not mistaken, Montana State, they they fly to a lot of the road games. And I mean, just that whole thing about uh, going from, you know, high school volleyball on, on the prairies in Saskatchewan and all the bus trips to uh, experiencing life at that level like that. You must have just thought this is just so crazy what's going on. Uh yeah, you know, honestly, it was surreal. It was like I was living in a dream. Yeah. Um, I never thought growing up that I would play in the NCAA. Never, never. <laughs> and so when these offers started coming up, I was like, no, this this isn't real. And so you go down there on a few visits and orientation, and, and it's still not real. And then uh, your parents drop you off there, and then it becomes really real. Um, but not yet that I was playing in the NCAA. It wasn't real until we went to our first um, tournament. It was in Indiana. And there was this NCAA logo up on the wall. And I just remember looking at it and just like, holy smokes, this is, <laughs> this is crazy. Yep. And so a few of us Canadians, we were, there were six of us at the time on the team. Um, and three of us were new. We went over and took a picture by the NCAA, NCAA logo. I think I still have that picture somewhere, but... I mean, we flew all over the United States. I've been to more places in the United States than I have been in Canada. I've played against uh, Stacey Gordon, who is a national player for Team Canada. I've played against some USA national. We, we played Stanford one year in, in postseason, like in our spring season. Mm -hmm. uh, that, I mean, those were the surreal moments, playing against those big teams. We played against the University of Washington the year they won the national championship. Um, at that time, we played to 30. And I still remember the scores. They beat us 30 to 9, 30, 15, and 30 to Oof. 9. So <laughs> we couldn't wait to get off the court for that one. But yep. Tell me this, though. How do you think that some of the upper level uh, ACAC women's volleyball teams would compare against, you know, some of the big sky uh, teams there? Like, is, it, is that still just miles ahead of what we've got here? Or what would you say? Yeah. Okay. Um, it, it would be it wouldn't it wouldn't be close and that's not taking anything away from the ACAC but um, right. it would be if I was to compare it to somewhere in Canada I would say some of those top U sport teams would compete with the, the lower teams in the big sky really um, yeah is and it they're, just, is... they're bigger they're bigger they're stronger they jump higher we like I mean we had a couple of girls on our team touching over 10 feet. So, wow. um, and, and I mean, clearly they recruit all across North America, right? I mean, they have yeah. big budgets to find that talent where, you know, in the ACAC, I mean, you know, you must have, you, you probably have a, a much smaller pool to draw from then, right? Yes. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, they just have the resources and, and there's so many teams and they, they just have the booster support and the, the support they get from their, their town or city, wherever that university is, is just unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and so uh, when, you, when you started out at Montana State, um, were you coming in off the bench pretty much every time or were you lucky enough to, to be a starter early on? No, I actually redshirted my first year. Okay. So that, that meant that I could practice and travel, but I just couldn't compete. Gotcha. So that was my first year and I was very grateful to have that year. Yeah. What, uh, what, what benefits do you get there? Just kind of soaking in the experience and that sort of thing. Is that kind of what that red shirt season might be all about? I mean, in addition yeah. to the practices. Yeah. It, it allows you time to catch up to the speed of the game. It's, it's very, very fast compared to, um, especially coming from a smaller town. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah. So, yeah, it just allows you to catch up to the speed of the game, learn the systems, and um, also to get used to the travel and the academic side of it. Yep. Now, what is it like to go back there? I assume you've been back to Bozeman a few times since then. Uh, you know, you've got a number of uh, records there. And, I mean, you had, a, you had an amazing career there at Montana State. When you go back, do people recognize you, or, or is that quite a while ago now? Uh, well, it's getting to be quite a while ago now. Um, yeah. When I first started going back, for sure, there and there's still some, some people that work in the athletics department, um, some of my instructors that are still there, my professors. So I know some people, but the coaches have changed. I mean, that oh my goodness, that was I left there in 2006, mm -hmm. so it's it's a while ago. 
and it's changed. It's, it's hard. It's kind of hard to go back because it's not the same as what I remember. Mm -hmm. um, the gym has changed. There's stuff within the athletics facility that has changed. This, the town of Bozeman or the city of Bozeman has grown so much. So it's oh, yeah. kind of hard to go back sometimes. Yeah. Hey, everyone. We've got uh, Kim Stonehouse here, women's volleyball head coach. Um, she's uh, joining us on the uh, on the vlog today, so we're excited to uh, have her along. Uh, Kim, talk a little bit about the season this past season, and uh, you know, uh, obviously hosting the uh, conference championships, uh, which is a great experience for the girls. Can you talk a little bit about this past season and, and how happy you were with how it all went? Yeah, I was. I was really happy, especially with the fact that we got to host championships and experience that. That that's been a goal of mine and of ours as a program to get to the championships every year and we've been close a lot of the time and we're you know just never quite got there so uh, I think there's so much um, experience that, that offers that okay now we've been there we know what it's like so it takes a little bit of that you know that unknown away and mm -hmm. if we when we return um, I'm, I'm glad that we had a large number of returners that are there that have been there and experienced that and can bring along the younger players that, that maybe didn't experience that last year. Yeah. So during your time as a head coach here uh, at Medicine at College, uh, has there been one player that really stands out as someone that just improved so much, like maybe at the start, you know, they barely made the team and you, you thought, you know what, maybe this could be a big mistake on my part, but then by the end of their time as a rattler, you're just blown away at just how far they progressed. Is there oh, anyone that comes to mind in that regard? That that's a tough one. Hmm. <laughs> I've had so many great players, and and they're so unique in so many ways. And and yeah. um. Oh man, I don't know if I can. There's so many. Yeah. I've I've, I've had the opportunity to coach so many wonderful young athletes, young ladies, and it, I think it would be hard to just pick one yeah okay how about this during your time uh playing uh and then the players you've coached has there ever been a player you thought oh man i wish i was on the court playing with her because we could really do some damage to some opponents oh yeah i would love to have played with shea oh yes yeah really yeah. i see i see she's watching right now so I there you go <laughs> yeah we we would have done great things yeah. What, what, yeah. what, what, what did she do on the court that, that just, she did so well? Um, she just, she gives everything and she would run through a wall and, and she reminded me of myself and her competitiveness and how, I just, how she behaved in the court and, and those type of things. I just think we would have got along really well and we would have been yeah. really successful. Yeah. That's excellent. All right. So uh, recruiting for the upcoming season, uh, I see we've uh, made a few signings and a few announcements in that regard. Uh, I mean, we're still a few months away from a season, fingers crossed. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure it will happen, but tell me, uh, tell me a little bit about how things are looking for the upcoming season for the Rattlers then. Well, we've got quite a, a few returners and yes, I have signed a number of players. I just signed another player yesterday actually a transfer libero that or defensive specialist that's coming in so okay. we've got a good balance of returners and income incoming players and um you know quite a few of those returners have had playing experience if not making their way onto the starting lineup and getting some playing time towards the end of the season so i think we're going to be very athletic maybe not as big as we've been in the past but very athletic and um i think the exciting part for me is that we're going to get to change up a bit of our game plan strategies, things like that to um, just because we're going to be so athletic. Well, I mean, the team, you're going to have a whole new nucleus this year, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It's, it's different. It's a first for me too. I, I, ever since I've been here, I've had, you know, the same group of players coming up through with me and yep. now that's starting to change and and so that it's it's different but it's also really exciting all at the same time good uh it's this offseason obviously is going to be a little bit different i mean the girls aren't necessarily going to have a chance to get on the court and play a whole lot but i mean obviously fitness is still going to be key what are you telling the players uh you know as far as staying in game form during this you know this kind of crazy time yeah you know the nice well not the nice thing but we're lucky that everyone's gonna be in the same boat 
So right. it's not like there's some teams that are going to be able to train some aren't. We're all in the same boat. So um, just trying to stay active. Um, we've kind of set up just recently here some workout buddies for the girls. So they kind of keep each other accountable. Um, I follow Art of Coaching um, and they they have been putting up a lot of at-home drills and workouts specific to volleyball. So I think that's been really great and I'll be able to share that with the with the team we've had we're going to meet every month and just kind of keep sure or make sure everybody's keeping healthy and and that they get to talk to each other you know it's it's like family for them it's important for them to have that communication so that's good what, yeah Good, good. Kim, well, I, I don't want to keep you too long here. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, one thing I do want to know, though, in following you on social media, I know that you're a big animal lover. So if you wouldn't mind, would you mind introducing us to uh, some of your uh, little critters that you have around the house oh, there? Is that okay? okay. I'm going to have to go <laughs> find them, but yes, I can do that. Sounds good. We'd love to. Okay, just a second. What do you have for animals anyway? I've got two. Oh, here's one right here. Okay, how do I switch this? Here we go. Uh, hey, Stevie. This is Stevie. <laughs> This is one of our dogs. Hi, Stevie. Hey, Stevie. Yeah. And then this is Samson. Samson's got three legs. Oh, wow. Look at that. Yeah. So, so yeah. hang on. He's missing a front paw. Is that correct? That's right. Here, I'll there we go. Up. What What is the story there? What happened? There. All right, but um, he jumped off a cliff. He was chasing, <laughs> <laughs> chasing a squirrel or a rabbit or something and went for a just, you know, little flying lesson and he didn't. He didn't come out the best on the end of that. So, 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 so broke broke the broke the leg or broke the paw, and the doctor just said, "You know what? It's probably for the best if we yeah, if we remove they, it." Wow. Yeah, they just it didn't uh, heal, so they had to wow. Heal. So, yeah, and then the cats are around here somewhere. They're harder to. I got two dogs and two cats, but okay. So tell t tell me this. Tell me this. All right. So you've got a dog with three legs. What does yep. that what does that tell you about about um, drive and determination? Because I'd imagine when you see that all the time, it's probably pretty inspirational, really. It is. I mean, he doesn't know he has three legs. And um, funny story, actually, we're out at uh, my fiance's farm this weekend, and I was we were driving this razor side by side around, and Stevie was keeping up. We were going about thirty kilometers an hour, and Samson wow. was right beside her. So resilience, right? That's amazing. Yeah. absolutely amazing Never give up. all right all right kim all the best to you thank you so much for joining us here today it's been such a, a pleasure and honor watching your teams all these years and uh and uh i'm just so excited to head back to that snake pit this fall it's going to be a little different but you know what i think it's it's what all of us need to get back there and you know athletics and just doing all the things that we enjoy whether it's playing or coaching or as a fan 100%. And thanks for everything you do. And I'm excited to see everybody in the snake pit again when our season starts. All right. Take care. Thank you so much, Kim. Hey, okay, thanks. See you later. All right. There Bye. she goes. That is Kim Stonehouse, volleyball head coach for the women at Medicine Night College. Guys, thank you so much for joining us here tonight. We're going to keep on doing as many of these as, as we can. And if you are a student athlete, or if you're an alumni, or if you are a coach, coaches, sure, why not? Uh, we'd love to get you on the uh, broadcast here. So if you wouldn't mind, you know, reaching out to one of the coaching staff or to, uh, to Patrick uh, with the Rattlers, uh, we'd love to get a full schedule here. And we'd love to do as many of these as we can, because we know there's so many uh, interesting and unique stories out there when it comes to Rattler Nation, and we would love to tell all of them. So I'm seeing a lot of... Uh, uh, student athletes right now a few alumni guys we would love to get you on here we'd love to learn more about you uh, in a little bit of a different way so all the best stay safe and we will talk to you I think we've got coach Rob of soccer uh, and futsal coming up tomorrow around the same time so hopefully you'll have a chance to join us then all right take care see ya <laughs>